If you're a non-athlete, just a regular person looking to get in good shape and trying to figure out if the WHOOP band is something that could help you or if it's just overkill, this video is for you. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a teacher trainer. I put this WHOOP band on about two years ago and I really haven't taken it off. In fact, I wear it so often, I have kind of a mean tan line here. I wear this when I do yoga, when I run, when I swim, when I ride a bike. I wear it every single night. I wear it every single day. It's made a huge difference in my life, much to my surprise. And in this video, here's what we'll cover. My biggest aha moments for me, really, really surprising things I didn't think I'd discover. Number two, we'll talk about how this thing actually works and we'll have a special guest, the quantified scientist, Rob Terhorst, join us to explain some of the technology. And number three, we'll walk through some of the considerations you might want to think about if you're considering investing in a Whoop band. Quick note here, I am not affiliated with Whoop at all. They don't pay me for this. I pay for my own device. All of the information presented here is biased based on my experience, but not with any kind of financial incentive. It's just to hopefully help you in making your decision. Let's start off with my biggest aha. I put this band on and the first thing I discovered is that my sleep quality is horrible. This wasn't news to me. I knew that I've been a bad sleeper. My entire adult life, I've struggled with sleep. If you've watched any of my old videos, you probably noticed I often have bags under my eyes. I knew it was bad. I figured I was sleeping about six hours per night. Turns out it was more like five hours per night, sometimes even less. Terrible sleep quality also, which means very low REM sleep. Here's what happened. With Whoop, when I open that app every single morning and I'm in the red, Whoop has a red, yellow, green rating system, and I can see how poorly I've slept and how bad my recovery is, and in my case, how little REM sleep I have, after about six weeks of that, I just had to do something about it. I could see that my health was getting degraded. Here's what I did. I did three specific things. Number one, I started sleeping in what I call a lightning bolt position. Super weird, but your head is elevated and your legs are elevated. I'll post a photo in the PDF down below. Made a huge difference with my breathing, my sleep quality, and my sleep quantity. In fact, I'm about 45 minutes longer and my REM sleep is around 20%, so a lot more balance. Second thing that I did is I started taking cool showers before bed. Not cold showers, but cool. Reduced my body temperature a little bit. Number three, I started using yoga breathing, which is something I've been teaching for years. Now to learn more about how the Whoop Band tracks sleep and some of the other sensors, let's check in with Rob, the quantified scientist, and he'll explain some of the technology that's inside this band. Uh, my name is Rob de Horst. I'm trained as a data scientist. So for several years, I've been tracking everything in my life. I've been getting weekly brain MRIs for four years now, I think. So how, how is Whoop tracking your sleep? Is it just using heart rate or what, what's happening? In general, these types of devices will use heart rate, which can be an indicator, but also movement. So um, usually they try to estimate REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, and when you're awake. And each of these phases has unique properties. During REM sleep, your brain is very active, but your body is paralyzed because you don't want to act out your dreams. Whereas during deep sleep, you also don't move so much, but your brain is in a way much less active and light sleep is relatively active brain and also um, more movement. What do you think about the the SpO2, the, the blood oxygen read that now comes in the, the WHOOP 4.0? There's there's cases where it can can help you. If you get some kind of respiratory infection and you don't know about yeah. it, or then you can actually get a warning signal like, hey, my, I'm not getting enough oxygen. There's something something wrong. Yeah. Uh, so this is like a typical use case where people get COVID and then they, they, yeah. they detect it that way. Um, but it can also be if you have sleep apnea or some other sleep issues that you didn't even know about. When you tested the Whoop against other lab grade, scientific grade devices, did you find that it consistently fell short in certain areas or what, what were the AB comparison? Yeah, so um, the device I use is um, an EEG device and yeah. it's now used in, in several scientific studies. So what Whoop does well is for all sleep stages, quite good. It estimates my deep sleep quite well, but a bit too much. So for me, the deep sleep I have, it finds, but it usually finds a bit more. Mm. Um, but overall, like it's very consistent over the, the, the different sleep stages where many devices somehow cannot measure REM sleep very well. Whoop is particularly good, is good, consistent overall. What are your thoughts on the heart rate variability data that comes out of the Whoop? And do you find that interesting as a data scientist? So it's interesting, but I always struggle a bit with, especially for instance, during sleep with how much value is there in heart rate variability when you already have a resting heart rate? Because 
Basically, those right. two generally anti-correlate pretty strongly. Like if you have a, a high resting heart rate, you'll have a low heart rate variability and vice yeah. versa. The next big insight I have was around my heart and cardiovascular training. When I first started doing yoga about 20 years ago, I put a chest strap, a polar chest strap on, and I was really excited to learn that my power vinyasa practice, my go-to practice for yoga, was elevating my heart rate, very similar to running or jogging. I was regularly hitting 160 beats per minute during peak poses, and I was getting a great cardiovascular workout. Now, as the decades have gone on, my body has really adapted to a lot of the common yoga poses, and I still get lots of benefits, but not so much for my heart. In fact, I can do an entire yoga class, and my heartbeat sometimes never even breaks 100 or 110. And again, when I saw that data every day in the app, I figured I really need to do something about that. My family on both sides has heart disease. Historically, I need to take good care of my heart. So I started running and I kept running and I've still been running now for about five to six days per week for a couple of years. Here's what else I did, which again, really surprised me. Inside the app, they have these groups and I joined a group for 40 to 50 year old men. And when I say join the group, I just hit join. I don't chat with anybody. I don't talk to anybody but there's a leaderboard and the leaderboard shows you where you are ranking. And in my group, I think there's about 20,000 men in my age group. And I was in like the bottom 25% when I started. And for whatever reason, that really motivated me to start running more and more and more. Long story short, I've now run two marathons. I've run two 10Ks. I'm using the word run. I should probably say jog. I just kind of stumble along. But regardless, it's really objectively improved my cardiovascular health. My resting heart rate now is in the low 40s. I think I'll get to the high 30s before the end of the year. My recovery is a lot better. My cardiovascular conditioning is really the best it's ever been in my life. I don't think that would have happened without that accountability. Not everybody responds to data the way that I did. Not everybody needs that accountability, but for me, it made a very big difference. Third thing, and this is probably the most remarkable for me as a yoga teacher, heart rate variability. I've been teaching and advocating for heart rate variability for years, but it's very hard to measure using traditional apps or chest straps. You just don't get a good reading. Heart rate variability is a measure of the difference between each beat in your heart rate. If I say your heart is beating at 120 beats per minute, that's an average. In a healthy heart, your heart beat speeds up on the inhale, boom, 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 and it slows down slightly on the exhale, boom, boom. I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea. The healthier your nervous system, the more variability there is with your inhale and your exhale beat to beat change. This is a very, very important metric for checking in with your nervous system to measure your readiness state for stress or exercise or exertion. But it's very hard to quantify. It's a very complicated mathematical calculation. And without 24 seven monitoring, it's very, very difficult. So most of my students and myself included aren't really tracking it. We're aware of it, but we can't track it. Here's what I learned. My heart rate variability is very, very high almost every day. What I realized is the only reason I've been able to survive on five hours of sleep is because my heart rate variability is very high, very likely from all my yoga practices. What does that mean? Well, what I've learned is if I can keep my heart rate variability high and I can get my sleep up into at least like a moderately good range, my mental health, my mental focus, my cognition, and my physical performance, all of those things improve. So that was a really big revelation for myself. And a lot of my breathing students are also excited to finally have a practical way to measure their heart rate variability on a daily basis. Okay, with all those things aside, if you're trying to figure out if the WHOOP is right for you, I think the number one question is, do you do cardio training? If you're not running or swimming or cycling or doing some type of cardiovascular training, I don't think the data will be very interest interesting for you. This band is very much geared towards people doing heart rate training. If you're not doing that, you won't get great data. It also doesn't do amazing data tracking for things like high intensity interval training or weightlifting. Sometimes there's a bit of lag with the tracking, so you might be a little bit disappointed and there might be a cheaper option available for you. Another important question is to think about data and tech in general. If you hate tech, if you hate computers, if you don't like data, if number crunching, if none of that stuff excites you, it might not be worth it. And the last consideration is this thing is expensive. I think I pay about $30 per month for it. That adds up pretty quickly. Depending on where you live, you can get a cheap gym membership for $30 a month. For me, it's really been worth it. Like I mentioned, it's really, really transformed my health and my life. But if you have other things you might want to invest in, whether that's fitness equipment or excursions or gym memberships, 
totally valid reason to maybe consider something else. Hope you like this video. Hope it's helpful in making your decision about the Whoop band. If you'd like more science-based yoga videos, hit subscribe down below. Remember to follow the Quantified Scientist. Big thanks to Rob for joining us in today's video. If you would like to find me online, my teaching calendar is at yogabody.com. I have a PDF of the sleep tips that I mentioned down below. And lastly, I try to answer all my comments down below. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.